Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Phil Neal, the real deal. And welcome back to JCPB Sports, where we cover all sports, all the time. Big day in Aggieland today as the Fighting Texas Aggies were back out on the football field today for their annual maroon and white spring football game. Kyle Field experienced a record-breaking crowd of a whopping 45,212 fans. Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel completed 24 of 30 passes for 303 yards and zero interceptions. And the emerging freshman running back Trey Williams had seven carries for 67 yards. Both the offense and defense looked pretty good out there on the field today, and Coach Sumlin says there's still much work to do. The victory went to the Maroon team as they outscored the White 43-23. In other news, the Texas A&M men's baseball team has been looking to mirror the same success experienced by their football team and their women's basketball team in their inaugural seasons of SEC play. The football team who went 11-2, which included the Cotton Bowl Championship, and the women's basketball team who actually won the SEC Championship Tournament, set pretty high standards that the Aggie baseball team was challenged to meet. By the looks of their conference record of 7-11, it appears that accomplishing this task may be a little bit easier said than done. Hopes of winning the regular season SEC title may be a bit out of hand, but the team is still hoping that they will do better in the SEC tournament. Transitioning to our next story, let's talk about a sport that transitions twice, from swimming to biking, then from biking to running. Yes, you guessed it, a triathlon. For more on this, here's Connor Radcliffe out on the course. Thanks, Phil. For those of you who don't know, triathlon is made up of three separate events, swimming, biking, and running, all wrapped up into one giant race. I'm here today at A&M Consolidated Middle School Junior High Track, where Texas A&M triathlon teams do most of their running workouts. But as you can see, there's no one here. That's just because they just competed at the USA Triathlon Collegiate Nationals race this past weekend in Tempe, Arizona. There are over 1,200 athletes in a school represented from every state except for Hawaii, Alaska, and I'm sure the Dakotas. For more on how they did, here's Robert Dow, the team president of Triathlon Club at A&M. What were the main goals of Texas A&M Triathlon going into nationals this year? Um, well, we wanted to be top five team uh, combined score. Uh, the way that works is you take the, uh, the, men's, the men's team score and the women's team score um, their top four athletes that finish and the score combined is what constitutes the uh, the team score um, so we were just off of that but that that was our main goal is to be back on the podium uh, we've missed it the last year uh, so we wanted to be back up there Robert continued to tell us that they were going to train throughout the summer and into the fall getting ready for next year's race also in Tempe, Arizona. And although they didn't reach all the goals they prepared for themselves this season, they would still consider this season a success. That's all from here, folks. I'm Connor Ratcliffe. Back to you, Phil. Thanks for teeing up that story for us, Connor. Speaking of teeing, the golf course over at Texas A&M has recently been undergoing several renovations. The $6 million project includes an all-new pro shop, clubhouse, Grand Pavilion, and maintenance facility. The new course will also be comprised of over 32,000 tons of sand. The CEO of Sterling Golf, the company heading this project, says that they're going to make this the best on-campus golf course in the world. The new course is expected to reopen sometime around September 24th, when the Fighting Texas Aggies will take on the defending national champions, the Crimson Tide. More big news for the Aggies. Women's basketball player Kelsey Bone has been selected to play in the WNBA draft where she was selected fifth overall to the New York Liberty, behind other college superstars such as Brittany Grinder from Baylor who went number one overall to the Phoenix Mercury and Elena Del Don who was selected number two overall to the Chicago Sky from Delaware. Bone, who averaged 16.6 points per game, managed to pull down 326 rebounds this season making school history by her being the highest selected player in the WNBA draft under the direction of coach Gary Blair while at Texas A&M. Other draftees include Sidney Colston, Danielle Adams, Tanisha Smith, and Takara Williams. Best of luck to Kelsey and her professional career. Well, that's all we have for you today on JCPB Sports, where we cover all sports, all the time. 
I'm your host, Phil Neal, The Real Deal. And see you next time.